I know my college diploma is somewhere. I just have no idea where. Gosh, I'm so horrible at keeping things organized. But you know who is organized is my wife. Maybe she knows where it is. Hey babe, do you know where my college diploma is? I have no idea. I mean, I know where my MBA one is though. Oh, you I do have- I my master's, you know that one? I forgot you have your MBA. You're so much smarter than me. But you know- It was hard to take in. I seriously have no idea where it is. It's probably in your office, in your pile of clutter underneath your cabinet stuff. Oh, what is that it? Oh no, it's my certified financial planner designation. You know what I just realized? I actually don't even need my diploma for this video. And I don't need my government money shooting gun either, but you know what? I kind of like it, so I thought I would go ahead and use it. And the reason we don't need my college diploma is because I just have a bachelor's degree. And we're not talking about a bachelor's degree, we're talking about an MBA. Side note, before I actually started recording this video, I actually forgot that my wife had her MBA. How fitting. So why are we talking about MBAs? Well, you may have recalled whenever we started doing online school, homeschool, Harvard announced that their MBA program was going completely online. Now that has since changed, but what hasn't changed is how much Harvard MBA program costs. So how much does the MBA program at Harvard cost? Well, we've got a long list of fees. We're starting off with tuition at $73,000. We have a student health fee at $1,200. A student health insurance plan at $3,900. Course and program materials, roughly $2,500. Room and utilities, if you're gonna be there for about nine months, estimated about $14,000 and then living expenses for those nine months at $16,500. So what is the total cost? Drum roll, please. So we add up all the costs to attend the MBA program at Harvard. We are looking at $111,000 for one year. Oh my God. But here's the kicker. It doesn't take one year to get your MBA at Harvard. It's going to take you two years so we've got two years at a hundred and eleven thousand dollars for each year oh my god so to get your mba at harvard it's going to equal a lot of money whoo that is a lot of money for an mba so the mba at harvard is going to cost you over two hundred and twenty thousand dollars so that begs to ask the question is there something better well i think that there is but but first i feel like i need to share a disclaimer so the disclaimer is that i actually dropped out of the mba program i know i'm an mba dropout i actually dropped out of college twice but see there is a bit of a backstory i had just started my career as a financial advisor i was growing my business working 60 hours a week trying to get my MBA at the same time and I finally hit a point a breaking point where I had to ask the question what's more important right now growing the business making some money or getting the MBA I decided that growing the business was the better decision and I'm glad that I stuck with it great job ah! So just feel like I need to share that little piece of information. I did drop out of the MBA program, so sorry, but I'm really not sorry. So what do I think is better than an MBA program from the prestigious Harvard? Well, that's what I'm gonna share right now. I believe that starting a blog is better than an MBA. Say what? No, you don't need to adjust your earbuds. That's what I said. Starting a blog is better than an MBA. But before I share the reasons why, let me share some other stats with you. Now, obviously, if I am suggesting to bypass the Harvard MBA and pursue blogging, then you gotta make a lot of money. Now, obviously, blogging has worked out well for me, but even in the beginning, I had to survive what I call the BMW stage. And that doesn't mean that I was rolling up in a brand new Beamer because of all the money I was making blogging. No, the BMW stage means that I was working 16 cents per hour whenever I first started blogging, like for the first year. So yeah, I wasn't making a lot of money. Actually, I wasn't making any money. 
So obviously other people are making a lot of money blogging. Uh, actually not quite because according to Glassdoor, they shared that the average salary that a blogger makes is just over $33,000 per year. And then Darren Rouse from Pro Blogger, he did a survey of his audience, which are predominantly bloggers, but he found out that 63% of his blogging community were making, check it, less than $100 per month vlogging. You know, I'm actually beginning to think I am crazy about this whole vlogging thing. All right, obviously there are some huge factors comparing a blog versus an MBA. I mean, the big one is time. It's gonna take you two years to get your MBA. As far as working on your blog, you can do this in your spare time, whether it's after work, on the weekends, before work. You get to control when you work and when you don't work on your blog, and that is huge. Yes. And the other big factor is cost. We already talked about it. it's $111,000 per year to get the MBA at Harvard, but starting a blog, we're looking at a very minimal investment. You're looking at about $12 for the domain. A hosting account for Bluehost is gonna run you about $60 per year. And if you sign up through them, they'll actually give you a free domain. And what if you need the actual website or a website theme? Well, that is WordPress. WordPress is checking it free unless you want some sort of special theme. And even a specialized theme is gonna run you about $50. So all in, just to get started, you're looking at around $100 to $150. That is a little cheaper than $111,000 for the MBA. Shut up and take my money. Now, if this still sounds very overwhelming, and if you have the voice that says, I am never gonna be able to start a blog, I have no idea how to do it, Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, I get it because I was there when I started. And because of that, I created a free email challenge that, it's free. that shows you step by step how not to only set up and create your first blog, but also how to make your first $1,000. And this is a free email challenge. You can sign up for that challenge at make1kchallenge.com. I'll have a link in the description. All you have to do is sign up, get the emails, follow the steps and get going. The thing that you have to remember about starting a blog is that it is not a get rich quick overnight scheme. I don't care who says it. It takes everybody some time before you finally make money, me included. So why am I such a huge advocate of starting the blog over the MBA? Well, I want to share some of my key principles of why I believe this. So let's go ahead and get started with number one. Now, a lot of the principles of why I believe this are shared with Josh Kaufman, who is the author of an amazing book called The Personal MBA. And basically, in the gist of his book, he shares a common principle that most entrepreneurs agree with is that you don't learn from reading a textbook. You don't learn from sitting in a class. You learn by doing. And for me, starting a blog, I learned so much. So the very first thing that I learned from the get-go was how to start a business. I've listened to a ton of business podcasts. I've read a ton of business books. I've talked to a ton of business leaders, but it wasn't until I actually started a business that I learned how to run a business. So over the course of time of having my blog, I learned how to track my expenses, how to start an LLC, how to hire and manage employees, how to to hire and fire independent contractors. I learned firsthand what were the best retirement accounts to set up for my situation as opposed to setting up for my clients. The second principle that I learned was how to build a thriving network. Now, for whatever reason, I just never considered myself to be a very good networker. Yes, being a former financial planner, I knew that I had to network with key leaders in the community. I was networking with CPAs and attorneys and anybody that I thought would be a good referral partner for my business. In regards to running an online business, networking is entirely different. You're not going to happy hour social functions trying to network with key employees or trying to network with other professionals in your area. You're not going to some golf scramble and hoping you get paired up with somebody that you think is going to give you a ton of new clients. What I learned about networking online is that it's just as strategic as networking offline. You just have to go about it a different way. One of the ways that I didn't realize I was networking until I started to get referrals and started making key contacts was through social media. I was using Twitter to network with other journalists, other PR representatives, other bloggers, other personal 
personal finance influencers and just getting to know them, engaging with them, sharing their content, and then they would share my contact. And then next thing you know, I'm setting up phone calls and getting to know these people even more. I learned how to send a cold email. <gasps> to somebody that I've never talked to before in my life and actually get them to open this email and reply. And trust me, this is a very specific skill set that you need, whether you're trying to run an online business or not. But I get tons of emails from people that don't know me that don't get a response because they don't know what to say, how to say it, and actually get me or other key people to respond. You know, something that I did in the beginning that was really one of the coolest things I ever pulled off. And this was, I mean, this was networking 101. Actually, this was more like networking at the MBA level. But I was able to put on this thing called the Roth IRA movement. And I was able to get over 140 different bloggers to participate. And because of my networking, because I was willing to help out others, I had all these bloggers contributing, all mentioning me, writing about me, talking about me. And I got some major press coverage because of it. Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, USA Today, Reuters. I mean, it was insane. This was at the beginning of my blogging career where I didn't really know anybody yet. But because I learned how to build a network and do it the right way, it just was a tremendous success. All right, so the other thing that running an online business has taught me that I think, of, gosh, just a, such a valuable lesson is how to be a better communicator. Uh, before I started my blog, like I was a not a great writer. Actually, no, I, I sucked as a writer. I had to learn how to craft better blog posts. I had to learn how to compose better emails. I had to learn how to communicate via YouTube. Ultimately, this led to me writing my first book. This led to me communicating to different journalists, getting published in Forbes, Business Insider, all these different publications, all because I learned how to be a better communicator. In case you missed that, I did say that I have a book available on Amazon.com. At the end of the day, you can have all the amazing ideas. You can have ideas that will change the world. But if you don't have the ability to communicate those ideas to others and lead others, then you're never going to get anywhere. And that is one crucial skill that I learned running an online business. Okay, so one of my most favorite movies is Field of Dreams. And in that movie, there's the classic line. If you build it, you will come. And with blogging, that's how easy it is. Once you build a blog, all the visitors, all the traffic just comes. Jeff, you are a liar. And I think you're crazy. So yeah, that is totally not the case. Once you start a blog, you don't get a flood of new traffic and new visitors. You have to learn how to market yourself. And that is like any other business. Without marketing, without awareness that your business exists, you will not make it. So you're probably wondering, how in the world did I market my blog? How did I actually get my name out there? Well, initially it was a lot of guest writing. So I was writing articles for other personal finance sites, any other website, that had more traffic than mine and getting those visitors to come over to my site and check it out. Check me out, check me out. Typed into Google, Certified Financial Planner Illinois, found my site, filled out the contact form, ended up coming in for a meeting and the coolest thing was they were the biggest client. It was a $2 million client that I got all because I learned how to optimize my website for conversions. This was all the stuff that I didn't learn in school. And I'm pretty sure you would not learn in an MBA program, but man, these are some amazing skills that have made me a ton of money. All right, speaking of high income skills, learning website conversions, how to optimize for website conversions, like that was an amazing high income skill that I learned, but it wasn't the only one. I mentioned how I was able to rank for Financial Planner Illinois. Ultimately, what I was learning was how to do SEO, search engine optimization. 
That wasn't the only term that I ranked for. I was ranking for terms such as 401k rollover, best life insurance. If you're in your 20s, how to invest your 401k. I started to rank for some very competitive keywords. Many of these keywords helped me get new clients, but also helped me to earn extra money through affiliate revenue, display ads, Google ads. Other high income skills that I learned was copywriting, how to build sales funnels, how to construct sales funnels that actually make money. Because I had a website that was getting a lot of traffic and I had the YouTube channel, I had a podcast, I was also getting offers to speak. Getting paid to speak several thousand dollars to either go on stage or even speak to smaller groups. So with that, I learned how to become a better speaker. All right, the sixth and final key lesson that I learned, and this is a big one. I learned how to scale a business. And that phrase doesn't give justice to what I have truly learned from growing and scaling my business because I've been able to make so much more money by working less, by being more efficient with my time, but also focusing my efforts on the things that I love to do. Many of you are familiar with the book, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. If you're not familiar with it, you need to read it. So in Tim's book is when I first learned about how to delegate, how to outsource, especially to virtual assistants overseas. And that was just the beginning. And this opened a door where I eventually learned about a concept called your unique ability. And your unique ability is defined as this is the God-given talents and skills that you have, the way that you are wired that allow you to perform at what you do best. And if we said that a little bit more succinctly, we would say doing what you love and getting paid a lot to do it. Ultimately, this allowed me to take a look at my business. What were all the things that I was doing, that I was wasting my time with? All the things that were on my schedule that were bogging down my time, eating away at my creativity. When I was able to recognize what were these tasks, I was able to then delegate, outsource, begin the hiring process where I was bringing on new team members that would take all of these tasks off my plate. Don't get me wrong. These are tasks that were crucial and essential to my business, but these weren't the tasks that were paying me a lot to do it. And for anyone that has your own business, you know how hard it is to give up tasks that you feel are your sole responsibility. And it was hard to let go. Let it go. But when I finally did, I started to see how important it was to free up my time to focus on doing things like strategic vision, meeting with clients, doing strategic partnerships, having important meetings with people I knew could take my business to the next level. I suddenly had all this time to focus on my business the way that I wanted to, and it was so much fun. And guess what? I also made a lot more money. That's how you scale up. But check this out. So yes, blogging is definitely my preference over the MBA. But as I mentioned, you don't make a lot of money in the beginning. And I don't know if you've seen this yet on the channel, but this is actually a, a picture of the very first check that I made from Google. So after blogging for nine months, I made $152.91. Ooh, that is so much money. But getting this check, that showed me that this was possible. And I was able to grow this $152 check to where I ended up getting a $10 million offer for my site. But that is a whole other video that you'll learn more about, but only if you are a subscriber to the Wealth Hacker YouTube channel. All right, y'all, it's time to get your online MBA, but I'm not talking about the University of Phoenix or any other online MBA program. I mean, you need to register a domain, start a website, it doesn't even have to be a blog. Maybe it ends up becoming a Shopify store or an Amazon store or your own online e-commerce store. Whatever it is, until you actually begin the process, that's when you start learning. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. So go ahead and skip that MBA. Peace.